Let's get ready to rumble! Hello my friends and welcome for another whiskey review. I am Dan and this YouTube channel is mainly about whiskey, a different expression being reviewed every week. I will go through visual presentation, nose, taste, finish, give the whiskey a mark and share my impressions with you. And if you want to be up to date with my future reviews, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and touch the bell for notification. And today I will start a series of a new episodes regarding a very interesting subject. How a lost distillery's whiskey tasted like. How can we travel back in time to experience a whiskey from a closed distillery? And I am not talking about recently closed down distilleries like Imperial, Brora, Capridonic, where plenty of stock is still available. I am talking about distilleries from 100 years ago. How can we bring back something like that? Well, have you seen Jurassic Park where they use some DNA samples to bring back the dinosaurs? In the whiskey world, we can trace back the so-called DNA and uh, through years of research, we can bring back the taste from the past as well. And uh, some smart people already did that, people from uh, the Lost Distillery Company. And uh, before I carry on, I will show you what I have here in front of me. Representing Highland, this is Ochnagi. Then Jericho. And Gerston. Representing Lowland, this is Strathedon. From Speyside, this is Toymore. Lossit. The Isle of Isla representative. And representing Campbelltown, this is Dalarion. Almost 100 of Scotland's malt whisky distilleries have been closed or destroyed in the last century because of economic pressures and many because of prohibitions in the 1920s. As a result, many unique and venerable names have been lost. Some big brands announced plans to reopen some iconic distilleries like Port Ellen, Brora and Rosebank. But Lost Distillery Company took a different approach. Initial research in 2009-2010, formalized in 2012, took a different view to simply trying to reopen a distillery. They explored a group of distillery that couldn't be reopened and decided to provide an experience accessible to all by using an academical research of the DNA of each distillery and by marrying single malt whiskies from different distilleries they created modern day inter interpretations of these long lost whiskies the lost distillery company archiving team led by professor michael moss from the university of glasgow focused on 10 key components that influenced the original character of these long lost whiskies to discover how that spirit might have tasted when it was last distilled. These components may be the location, date of the last distillation, the water, the yeast, which strains of barley were used, was the malted barley pitted or unpitted, what material the mash tun was made from, the washback, 
and the shape and size of the steel. What type of wood was used to store or transport the whiskey? And since chill filtration wasn't available a century ago, no whiskies from the Lost Distillery Company are chill filtered. These brands are more and more popular and are now available in more than 40 markets globally. Talaryuan was once one of the many distilleries in Campbelltown, now only a small handful remain. This is a blended malt from the Lost Distillery Company, created following plenty of research into Talaryuan as an interpretation of what their whiskey could have tasted like. Visual presentation, full-bodied, oily, slow legs and dark golden color. The Dalarion distillery created in 1825 by Charles Colville was located in the Campbelltown region, once home to 34 distilleries. Today, there are three operating distilleries there, Springbank, Glen Scotia and Glen Gyle. Malting was performed on site using water from Cross Hill Loch. They had three pot stills in the 1880s and the new make spirit would have been filled into rum, sherry, beer, wine or fresh oak casks. By 1835, there were 29 distilleries in Campbelltown, including Talaryon. At its peak, 34 distilleries operated in the whiskey capital before economic collapse in the 1920s. This collapse was down to overproduction, US prohibition, uh, blenders, preference for a space-side scotch, and the impact of minimum aging and post-war tax increases. So, Dollar Yuan closed for good in 1925. The age stocks were sold off, the buildings demolished within five years and replaced by a housing estate remained Parliament House. And now, Dollar Yuan has been recreated by the Lost East Dairy Company. 700 mils bottle, 43% ABV, bottled at natural color and non-chill filtered. On the nose, freshly poured from the bottle, it was earthy, even musty I could say. Now it's a mineral nose, herbal, yes, um, quite herbaceous with a little bit of sherry profile and pit smoke. So when you first pour it in the glass, you could be a bit harsh in judgment, but once you give it a few minutes to open up, you will definitely be rewarded. It becomes friendly on the nose and the pit smoke is now well balanced by the fruitiness. Strawberries, and raspberries. Yes, this is a very interesting smell. On the palate, mm. more peat on the palate, herbal, and it reminds me of um, Colila peat smoke, but. It could also be a peated Glen Scotia. It's oily and uh, creamy. Spicy, gingery, some um, vanilla, some uh, sweetness, and uh, the alcohol is very well integrated. 
There are notes of apple and apricot in the background. Medium long finish, sweet and fruity, and the pit smoke will um, linger for a while. Eight point nine, a malt mark, a great malt mark for a Campbelltown whiskey that's supposed to bring back the taste of the long gone Talaryuan. It's nice, it's bold, fresh, tasty. Good job. Thank you for watching, and uh, until my next whiskey review, when uh, I shall review uh, another lost distillery malt whiskey, Slangeva.